right guys, welcome to another video. A little bit of a different scene. Uh, this video is actually gonna be two, two different cameras in one video. So it's gonna be a little interesting. Um, but today we are not going to be home for this video. I am actually heading out to my other location where I have another office um, and we're gonna be working there, but the main topic I wanted to talk about today is I am prepping for a coding interview. I just reached out, I applied to a apprenticeship to a company here in San Francisco. Um, the cool thing about the apprenticeship is that, that this apprenticeship is for people with non-traditional backgrounds. That being, you know, coding uh, boot camps and um, self-taught developers. I saw that on LinkedIn, you know, uh, a friend of mine, shouts out to you, Taryn, for sending that to me. Um, but he sent that to me on LinkedIn. I saw it and I was intrigued from the get. I really, really, really wanted to take that on. So I applied. They emailed me yesterday in the morning saying, hey, we want to get this interview process rolling with you. Um, we have a 70 minute coding exercise that you, got, that you need to turn in by next week. Um, and it turns out, it's all computer science stuff. Now, that's not gonna be an issue. You know, I can definitely teach myself that stuff. The thing is, my whole journey has been front-end development. I've put not a lot of priority on computer science. So, essentially, what I'm probably going to have to do is cram a whole, you know, curriculum's worth of computer science into Le a little less than a week um, I don't know how that's gonna go we'll see how that goes but that's gonna be what I'm gonna be documenting for this video I'll be bringing you along just trying to figure out what it is and how the hell we're gonna learn all this computer science stuff what I'm gonna be learning and uh, taking that practice assessment course trying to prep for this interview and then uh, come Tuesday we'll see what happens but um, Exciting times as a self-taught dev, you know, getting these opportunities to really, really showcase who you are and what you know and how passionate you are about software development um, is something that I've been looking forward to for a very, 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 very long time. And to be able to see this apprenticeship come up and be in the interview process now is uh, is nothing short of amazing for me. So I'm going to be putting my heart and soul into this. A lot, a lot of time is gonna be spent studying, so uh, let's get to it. So right now, um, we were essentially going through nodes, like I just said in the previous clip. Um, I have some notes on it right here, but we'll kind of talk about it. So essentially nodes are, um, nodes are like what's called the fundamental building blocks of you know computer science um, data structures is what I wrote down. Um, forms the basis for things like linked lists, stacks, queues, trees, and, and things like that. Um, they're gonna contain data links to other nodes. Um, so, you know, a node can contain something like a string of, um, like in this case, if you're looking here in the constructor for the class node, um, we have a data property that in this instance, where we initiate a new node, um, it's holding a string of I am an instance of a node. Right, so that's its data point. And its link right now is null. So that this is essentially our only node in the stack or in whatever data structure we have. So, you know, if, if we have multiple nodes, I guess, is what I'm assuming, you traverse all those nodes and if it hits this point and the link is null, then that means that there's no more nodes to traverse and that's the end of it. So that's my understanding right now um, as far as what's going on. So we will see right now we were, we were working on setting the next node. So here that first instruction is we're, we're asked to create another method in the class. So down here I've Follow the instructions. I, I, I made a new method called set next node with a with node as an argument. So when we call it, we're gonna pass it a node to set, and then in the function body, we're saying, hey, in this dot next, it's going to equal whatever node we pass. So very simple stuff. If you know JavaScript, if you're in another language, I don't know if it's gonna be similar or not, but that's pretty much what we've got going on right now. Now we have to verify that our 
Set next note performance is intended. Oh, well that's all I had to do. Well, I wasn't following instructions correctly, but uh, this is what it looks like now after I've like scurried through all of that. So here we created our second node instance. Uh, I set it to second instance so that um, the constructor has something to put in as for the data point. Um, down here, we said first node, we called the set next node method and passed the second node as the argument there so that in this method, it's now using it as the next and setting it for that, for that, uh, for that class or that object. And then now we log it out. So now we can see we've console.log the first node. Its data point is I'm an instance of a node and it's next property now points to the node that has second instance um, and that instance which being the second has no next therefore it's null um, and that's where we would stop traversing all the nodes because that's the last one so uh, aside from failing the instructions for a little bit that's a pretty simple um, concept right there all right uh, doubly okay we're going over doubly linked lists now let's see what we've got going on here okay so uh by directional linked list so just to preface for those of you guys who are here right now i'm learning computer science stuff because i have a data structure and algorithms interview coming up on tuesday and i know nothing so I'm taking a course right now in Codecademy or like a path. And so a lot of the stuff that you're gonna hear coming out of my mouth is gonna be horrific. Probably if you know this stuff, um, this will also be in the YouTube video. So I hate the DS and algos. Yeah, I know. I mean, I'm learning to hate it too, but I mean, I guess it's necessary for me to learn, um, which again is part of the interview. And I have like a coding assessment I got to turn in on Tuesday. So I'm like, ah, Fine, I'll learn it. I know nothing. So I have this that I've got to go through. And I also have this book, Cracking the Coding Interview, that I'll probably go through a little bit tonight before I go to sleep. Um, but that's what we got going on. We don't know anything, so you are fine. So I guess you get to learn with me and watch me struggle. Again, this is all going to be part of the YouTube video or the vlog that I'm putting out too. So should be fun times. Should be fun times. When adding to the head of the doubly linked list, we first need to check if there is a current head to the list. If there isn't, then the list is empty and we can simply make our new node, both the head and tail, wait. And tail and set both pointers to null. If the list is not empty, then we will. So for this, I get, so in the previous one, I was learning about like, just regular linked lists and there was no previous node so i guess again with the bi-directional thing it's a there's a previous node now that we have to link so it just becomes like that much more complicated because now if i take one node out it's gonna be a shit show because there's two pointers and you gotta change both the pointers on the other nodes and uh, yoy -yoy. that's gonna be a mess We must set the remove nodes preceding nodes next pointer to its fault. Dude, this stuff is so complicated. Like it, 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 when you look at it, it's fine. But when you read this stuff, it's like, what? We'll see how good I do. Let's see this. Oh, okay. Let's, let's get at. Okay. Consider A, B, C. When removing node B, the pointers of which nodes should be updated. What? A and C? Okay, that's a dumb question. That's super easy. Consider A, B, C when removing node C, the pointers of which node should be updated. Uh, so this one's next node is null. So this one's next node should be null as well. Its previous node is node B. This one's pre node is A. I don't think that needs to be changed. So just node B. Doubly linked list nodes contain all of the following doubly link contain all of the following except children 
Mm, doubly list are true. Bi directional. Doubly linked lists have all the following except a direction. Consider A, B, C. When removing node A, the pointers of which node should be updated. Just, uh, okay, hold on. So this one's previous node is null because it's the head. This one's prev node needs to be changed. Then this one's next node doesn't. So node B. Nice. Very easy. Makes it really easy when I get to like literally just speak out loud about this stuff. Let's implement a doubly linked list in JavaScript. A doubly linked list is a sequ sequential chain of nodes, just like a linked list. The nodes we used for our linked list contain two elements, data, a link to the next node, but now we have to add a previous. The difference between a doubly, list, doubly linked list and linked list is that in a doubly linked list, there are pointers to the previous node as well as the next node. This means that the doubly linked list data structure has a tail property in addition to the head property that's present in the linked list data structure. Whew. Um, new. To start, we're going to look at the updated node class and create the constructor. Okay, so we're going to use a provided node class, which you can find in Node.js. We've added a previous property to the class as well as set previous node and get previous node methods. Take a look at and see the changes. Okay, so here's our constructor. It takes an argument of data. This.data equals data. This.next, which is our next pointer, initially is null. This.previous is also null. Um, when we call the set next node method, we put in an argument of node. If node is an instance of node or node is equal to null, then we create or we put that node as our next node. So that's, that's what that method's doing. If it's not an instance of node or it doesn't equal null, then we throw an error because it's not an instance of a node class. The set previous node method, we take another argument of node. If node is same thing, same check. Um, if all that checks out, then we set the previous node. So the previous link to that node. Um, and then we throw the error if none of those requirements are met. These two just show us and print. Well, not print, but they show us the, uh, they give us the value of whatever their next or previous pointer nodes are. So simple stuff. What's the difference between doubly and single? So doubly is bi-directional, single is unidirectional. Um, difference being the doubly has a previous and a next node and the single only has a next node. Um, so in doubly's nodes have double or two pointers. I get, oh, hopefully I got that right. I've been working on this for pretty much all day. So I hope I got that correct. So I think what it's doing is remove tail is equal to the current tail, right? And we're just keeping that as a reference so that we can go in and do the changes. So this that tail would be equal to the previous node that is obviously staying, right? So this becomes remove tail. This now becomes um, this now becomes the this dot tail. So that gets switched backwards. And then if this dot tail is true, then we say this dot tail dot set next node is equal to null. So then now this this one's next node is now null because that's what this is now. And then if remove this is just a check to say if remove tail is also the head, well so which is the same node, meaning if there's only a single item in the list, then you you call the remove head method and just get rid of it entirely, right? And so you're doing both um, things at the same time. And at the end, you remove or you return the remove tails data, which is going to be this one. This one, next node. This one's next node would not be null. I there need. I think there's a this this one's next node needs to now change. Or well, no, this one wouldn't have to change at all because its next node still points to this node because it's still going this way, right? 
The only things that had to change were pointers on these two notes. So we're, we're just calling this note since we want to remove the tail. We're calling it now the removed tail so that we can point to this one and call this one the current tail. I don't know if I explained that right at all, but that's, that's just to my understanding. I hope that makes sense. And I hope that was correct because I literally put my heart and soul into that explanation. <laughs> Now that we have our nodes, we can remove the pointers to and from nodes removed. Now that we have our nodes, okay. Ah, I see. Okay, so here, so since we've targeted somewhere in the middle, there's a node, there's obviously two surrounding nodes. Um, so right now we're establishing, we need this node if it's in the middle and we need this node. So now that we can actually change the pointers to instead take this note out and link to each other here because they're not pointing to each other this is getting really exciting 